two, one, two. Here we go. Starts off with this idea of having even functions versus compared to odd functions. If you just observe an example of an even function, you've got all even uh, powers. No, technically, uh, never mind. You've got even powers. A couple of other things. If I graph this, which I did on decimals, it looks a lot like y equals x squared. And if you notice, it's got one turning point. So it's got an odd number of turning points. Now sometimes if you graph um, an equation x to the fourth with x cubed and then x squared, and then you'll end up getting something like this. And you see you've got one, two, three turning points. There's an odd number of turning points with an even uh, highest power. But having said that, by definition, an even function only has even exponents. And it's symmetric around the y-axis. So if I took the y-axis and I spun it, it would be the exact same graph. So there's a definition of an even function. Now, an odd function is slightly different. It starts out with the same thing. Your powers are only odd. Now, there's different functions like this that have all of them. Odd, even, odd, even. And so this doesn't fit in an odd uh, definition. It doesn't fit in an even function's definition. But this definitely is a function, and it has an equation. And um, this, compared to this, will have an even number of turning points. So for example, I graphed this one right here on decimals. And it looks something like this. It looks like a cubic. But if you notice, it's, it's supposed to come down here and turn right there, and then turn again. So it, it looked more like that. So you'd have one, two turning points. So there's an even number of turning points for an odd function. And here's a little different. If you rotate it uh, around the origin, 0, 0, that's 180 degrees. So if you spun this thing as if, like if you have a nail right there in the origin and you spun it, it would end up being the exact same graph. So rotational symmetry is different than just being symmetric around the Y. So there's a little difference there, but I think you guys get it. All right, so just showed you an example of an even function versus an odd function by just kind of looking at the details. Now they're going to have you take a look at uh, charts and determine is it even or is it odd. And you can see I got two charts on the board right here for you. Now, when you do your homework problems, they're not going to have a graph sitting right there for you. I have a graph sitting right there for you so you can better understand what it is they're really saying. And so I have a, I have the same example of the even function. This was a 2. And, um, and I have the example of the odd function. Now, I literally took the even function, made some x's, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, plugged them into this, calculated their result. I got 25, 4, 1, 4, 25. Now, Remember, all they're going to give you is this. They're not going to give you this, so you just have to look at this and understand what the rules are. But having the picture, I think, will help you understand what's going on. So the rules are corresponding positive and negative inputs. That means x. So I got a negative 2 and a 2. Those are corresponding positive and negative inputs have the same outputs. Now they both have 25 corresponding positive and negative inputs. They have the same output. We don't worry about the zero so much. And if we plot these points, you see we go negative 2. My drawing's terrible. So negative 2, way up to 25, out 2, way up to 25, out 1, up 4, negative 1, 4. You can see how this paints a picture of this, which paints a picture of these rules. So it's not a big deal once you kind of dissect it. Now let's talk about the odd one. Corresponding positive and negative inputs, so there's my negative 2 and my positive 2, have opposite in outputs. And no, 
this, that's true. I got a negative 96 and a positive 96. And yes, I literally took a negative 2, plugged it in here, uh, multiplied it by itself five times, and tripled it, and I cubed it, and I ended up getting negative 96. You can check it out for yourself. The point is, this chart follows this rule. If we actually think about it, negative 2, negative 96, negative 2, way down, negative 1, a little bit down, and then you can see 1, 4, 2, way up to 96. So once again, this is an odd function. This paints a picture of this, which follows these rules. But remember, you're going to have to look at this and kind of understand. Um, I'm a visual learner, so the graph really makes sense to me, and I see that this connects with this. So there you go. A couple more things. Okay, so here's one that qualifies as neither odd or even. And you can see there's opposites and there's really no correlation. Opposites, no correlation. Opposite, no correlation. They don't fit into either definition of even or odd functions. Now, I did not, uh, I just made this up. Remember, I had something like this where there's odd powers and even powers. So this would not fit in either definition. And you didn't, and I didn't literally do it. But if you plug x's in like this, you get all sorts of different uh, values for y, the output. So that it's neither even or odd. Not to say this doesn't have a graph, it just doesn't fit into the definition of an even or odd function. Tongue twister. Hopefully that makes sense. So in math, Seems like there's always an exception to the rule or a tricky situation. So this one fits into what I would call a tricky category. Because if you looked at this and you said, okay, all it has is an odd power, you'd go, ah, this is an odd function. Well, wait a minute, though. By definition, an even function, opposite inputs, same outputs. Opposite inputs. Same outputs. And let's just look at one. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8, but the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. Same thing with 2. 2 cubed is 8, absolute value of 8 is 8. So you can see that the, the if we go by the power, we go, ah, it's odd. But if we go by the chart, we would see that it's actually even. And if we actually looked at the drawing, it would look like a B. And we'd go, wait a minute, the definition for an even is if you spun it around the y-axis, you get symmetry, and you do. Now, if we tilted this thing, uh-oh, I'm going to get myself in trouble. If we spun this thing 180 degrees, this would actually go here, this would spin over here and go like that, and we do not have symmetry around the origin, so it's not odd. So that one's tricky, no doubt about it. So you got to look at the big picture especially for the absolute value problems. Okay, this is a simple concept as long as you know the rules. So a lot of this uh, math, this pre-calc, is going to ask you about the graphs. They're going to ask you, is the graph increasing or is it decreasing? So to give you an idea, when they ask you this question, they want you to always think left to right. And when I see that, this is where I think about my roller coaster. So you're on a graph, you know, Cedar Point. It's like, well, are you going up or are you going down in this little uh, window? Well, first of all, let's get a general idea of what's going on. Let's talk about y equals x cubed. That looks something like this. And if I'm moving left to right, the entire graph is increasing. I'm going up the whole thing. Now, when they say from 2 to 3, they want you to capture a window. So if I plugged in those, those values, and I said, all right, let 2 and 3, that'd be 8 and 27. So what they want you to look at is 1, 2, 8, we'll say it's right here. This is supposed to be going out that way a little bit more. 327 would be way up here. So in this little piece, moving left to right, you can see you're going up. So that's increasing in that window. Now let's take a look at this one. If we graph the whole thing, negative one half plus x plus two, there's our y-intercept. 
down one, right two, and you would draw the whole thing in there, and the whole thing is decreasing. So we know even in this window, it's going to be decreasing. But let's act like um, we don't know that. What they really want you to do is take a look at this window from two to three. So if I put a two in here, two times negative a half is negative one plus two is one. I put a three in there, I get negative three halves plus two, which is 0.5. So two, one, we knew that one. 3.5 would be right there. So they want you to only think about this chunk and ask the question, is it increasing or decreasing? Well, if you're in your little roller coaster, uh, not an insane ride, but you would be decreasing in that interval. Now, sometimes you'll get some crazy graphs, and it might be decreasing here, increasing here, decreasing here, increasing there, and if they give you a window between here and here, you'd say decreasing. If they give you a window from here to here, you would say increasing. So, just a general rule, left to right, when they ask you these questions. So there'll be a few problems asking you to find special angles, which is saying take the liberty to just know that uh, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 6, these are our real special angles, 45, 60, 30. They're saying that there's going to be some connection to these in our answers. So, oh, I forgot to finish this one. This one goes all the way around here. Where did I stop? Okay, yeah, right here. And so, the instructions in unit circle. Now, I don't know if I've said this yet. That means your spinner has a unit length of one. So, we know that when you see unit circle, they're saying let your radius be one, or that's your hypotenuse, or your spinner. Now, with that being said, they're just saying, hey, figure this out, and yes, we need special angles. Well, we know that this is down, so it's going to be negative, but we go down a chunk, which is 90, and then we go another chunk of 90, so plus another negative 90, and if they're saying this is special, they're saying, it's either 30, 60, or 90. Well, go by what it looks like. It's 30. So we go another negative 30. So that's negative 180 plus a negative 30, which is negative 210. Now, if they want you to convert that to radians, I would say, hey, 30 goes into 210 seven times. So this is 7, 30 degrees, pi over 6, but it's negative. Okay. This one, you can see we spun it up, so we know our answer is going to be positive. We go 90, 90, 90, let's take, that's 270, plus this little piece. And so that looks also, well, let's go ahead and go a little bit farther and say, hey, that looks 45. So I'm going to add another 45 and make that 315 degrees. Now, if they want in radians, we got to think to ourselves, how many 45s go into 315? Well, there's 2, 4, 6, 7. So that's 7 45s. So it's 7 pi over 4, because pi over 4 is 45. So that would be your answer. One more thing to show you. All right, so one thing I love about this book is just all over the place sometimes. So then they're going to throw some reminders of uh, just basic math 101, solve for x. Well, I can take out a 3x, so there we go, and it was x minus 9 is 0. Well, what minus 9 is 0? 9. What can I put in for that to make this 0? Zero? 0. Easy peasy, just a reminder of factoring and solving. A little different spin, solve for x. Subtract c, subtract c. 2x squared equals 4 minus c. This is what's called abstract algebra. It's not quite as neat and tidy. You're not really finding an answer. You're just solving for x, which means get it alone. So I got to divide by 2, divide by 2. So I get x squared equals 